Would you like to use zero tier on your CHR? Well, I've got great news for you. This video will show you how to use zero tier on a CHR or x86 virtual router or device that you might have the software installed on bare metal. So that you can use this as a VPN concentrator or for labbing purposes or whatever you want. So this is a neat little hack that I'm hopefully gonna show you using containers just to help you get zero tier installed on your virtual network. So let's quickly think about a couple of use cases that we can use this for. Well, the biggest thing that I can think of is it gives us a way to easily access our home environments or home labs remotely. And it has the added benefit of being able to route to different networks across your SD-WAN network, which is zero tier. So this is extremely useful if you maybe want to get your VMs that are hosted at your house or at your office or something. And just a quick and really, really awesome way to get this done. And it doesn't just have to be for home lab access. You can set this up for out of band management type of solutions where you can access your network remotely to quickly have a look and see what's wrong with the devices via some type of LTE connection or it can also just be for a full-fledged VPN service that you're trying to build between all of your sites and you just want them to be able to connect securely using um, SD-WAN via zero tier. So I think those three use cases are very typical, but it's really, really relevant because a lot of people will tend to use it for those type of solutions. So what we're going to be doing is we will be installing a zero tier container on an x86 Microtik on my hypervisor, and then we will be able to use this as a means of accessing my virtual lab. So let's begin by actually logging on to Winbox and then from Winbox, we will do the whole process. Now, I just want to stress, I'm already running various containers on this environment. So I'll just briefly be touching on some of the prerequisites that you will need. I will definitely link separate videos like how to actually configure everything from scratch in the pinned comments. So please have a look at that. But in essence, what you want is you firstly want to set up a virtual network. And what you'd like to do for that is you will first add a bridge and you can call this bridge or Docker bridge or whatever you'd like to name it. And then you will be creating virtual ethernet interfaces or VEATHs to actually be used as NICs for your containers. And you will be adding those VEATH interfaces as ports to your bridge. And this will actually allow your virtual network a means to connect with your actual network or with each other if needed. So it's it's really useful. Now to actually add a VEATH or a VEthernet interface, you can go to your interfaces, go to VEATH, and let's just add a new VEATH interface. Now I've already got a zero tier interface running, but we can set up a second container. It's really not gonna change anything. Now what I tend to like to do is just leave the name as whatever the new VEATH interface is, give it a little dash and then give it a description what it is. So this will be for my zero tier two. Now your address, this is where you will specify the IP address and subnet that the container will use. So I'm going to be using 10.0.0.100 slash 24 for this container. And then its gateway will be 10.0.0.1, which is the IP address that has been bound to the bridge interface. So if I apply this and I go to my IP addresses, we will see that 10.0.0.1 slash 24 is physically bound to the Docker's bridge. Now, last step is I actually just need to add that interface to this bridge. So I will go to the ports and I will add the new port and the port will be my v7-zt2, bind it to the Docker's bridge, hit apply. Now the network portion is sorted. So besides the network, we actually need to make sure that we are allowing containers on this device. Now there's two steps for this. Firstly, you will have to install the containers package. So if you look at your system packages, just make sure that you have the container package installed. If you don't have container installed, it won't work. Second step is you need to make sure that your device is set for container mode. Now to achieve this, you can go into your terminal window and you can just do a system device mode. You can print this and it will tell you if it is on container mode yes or no. If it's a no, then you need to set it in container mode. And again, I'll have a separate video that I'll use that you can follow to do that. But in essence, it's as easy as just setting it to yes and then restarting the VM and then it should boot up in container mode. So great. So your VM actually boots back up your, your x86 or your CHR and it should have this container option here, container tab. So when you click this, 
This will actually bring up a menu for all of your containers. And what's nice is MicroTik has actually made a lot of headway with how you can configure and manage your containers. I really appreciate everything they've done uh, for us over the last couple of months. So this is really awesome. So before we add any containers, I just first want to mention a few more prerequisites in the container option. And that is when you click on this config button, just make sure that the registry URL is set to HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash registry dash one dot docker dot io. This is in essence where your MicroTik is going to be pulling the Docker containers from and then extracting it to a temp directory on your local MicroTik to actually install the Docker container. Some baseline stuff, but definitely helpful. If you want to, you can import your own containers. It's a little bit different to do, uh, but that you can follow the MicroTik wiki or docs for. I will post that in the pinned comment as well. So feel free to have a look at that. So let's actually add this container. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna click on the plus. We're gonna set our remote image. Now, what do we set this to? Well, we can find out by going to the Docker hub. So if I go to hub.docker.com and I search for zero tier, it should bring up zero tier forward slash zero tier. This is the official zero tier container. So I can just copy this or I could go to the tags and then we can see what the tags are. So we'll use zero tier forward slash zero tier colon latest to actually download the specific container. But if we navigate back to the overview, it gives you a nice explanation of what the container is, how it works, some of the functions on it, some environment variables you can set, all kinds of nice stuff. But I'm gonna give you a very baseline and easy way to configure everything. So all that we want to do is just download this container. So I'll just copy this and I'll go back onto my MicroTik paste it in the remote image and then colon latest for the latest build. My interface, I'm going to select this as the vith7-zt2 that I've actually created during this video. And we're not gonna set any environment list for this demonstration, even though there are some environment variables you can set. But what I do want to set additionally here is maybe just the logging. And you can specify your root directory. Think of this as where the actual thing is going to be stored. So if you want to store this on an external drive, perhaps, then this is where you could do that. But I'll just leave this blank as well. So <laughs> this is baseline it. This is all that I really need. So once I hit apply, it should actually be downloading this container now from hub.docker.com or docker.io. And it is going to take a little bit of time, but it's not a big container. The zero tier container is actually extremely small. And once this has finished extracting, we should be able to start up the container. All right, so our container has finished started or extracted. We can see that the OS is Linux and our architecture is AMD64, which is perfect. So next step for me is actually just to start the container. Now I can click on start here, but there is one thing I recommend people do when it comes to some containers, because a lot of people, they like their containers to start up automatically when they first um, reboot the MicroTik for whatever reason. If you don't do this, then you manually need to start the MicroTik every time. So let's just quickly do this. I'll do a container print. This will just give us a list of all of the containers. Then I want to find my number six here, which is the new container that I added. It is to my VEF7-ZT2, so I know this is the right container. So all I want to do is container set start on boot, yes. And then I will list this as item number six, hit enter. And now all this does is it will start the container automatically whenever the marketer gets rebooted. So I don't need to set up a scheduler with a script to do this. This is now being done by the marketer automatically. Perfect. So next step is actually starting the container. So we can navigate back to the container menu or you could start it from the CLI as well, but I'll just do everything from the menu. So you can just click on the container, click on start, and then it will go into a running state. Now running means obviously that the container is live and it's actually booting up and getting ready to work. Now, this is actually where the fun is gonna start and where I smashed my head into a wall a few times trying to figure out how to get zero to your working on a virtual router. So the container is running, but if we actually want to join our zero tier network. How are we gonna do that? You could read there's some ways that they mention with environment variables to get this done. However, I found that I typically was struggling with that. So the easiest way to actually do this is to log onto the container directly via a shell. Now, this doesn't mean SSH or Telnet onto the container. This means you're literally going to shell onto the container from your MicroTik command line. So if we go back to the CLI, I can do a container and again, let's just do a print to make sure we are working on the correct container. 
So we know line item six is the V7-ZT2. So I know that is what I wanna work on. So if we do a container shell, and then I can specify the line item, this is basically going to log me into that container and it will be as if I'm working on Linux as well. It's gonna be crazy, you're gonna see. So I'm going to shell onto six and you immediately see this changes to root at R1. Whoa, <laughs> this is crazy. So I'm technically now on the file system on the back end of the Microtik. Now, this is also kind of why this is a little bit dangerous as well, because we are now actually working on Linux now. We're working on the back end, which is typically not where you want people to be. And this is why you need to be extra careful and very secure when you work with containers, especially when it comes to Microtik. So now that we are on the shell, we can actually run with zero tier as if we were working on Linux. So we could just do a zero tier dash CLI, then we can specify join. And then after the join, we can actually paste in our network ID that we get from zero tier. Now, if you haven't watched my zero tier video, I will link that as well for you to watch. But basically when you go to the zero tier site, you'll be able to create a network. And then with this network, you'll be able to join different devices so that they can speak each other over the software defined WAN, over SD-WAN. Now, we just really need this network ID, 233CCAAC273B12BA. Think of this as the secret handshake between the zero tier clients to be able to connect to this zero tier network. Now, if we scroll down, and I know that I'm showing my public IPs here, I'm actually just going to uh, either mask this or I'm just gonna reboot my router since I get dynamic IP, so I'm not too stressed about you guys seeing this either. But we can see there are two clients currently that have been authorized to connect. Now my zero tier is set up where I physically need to accept you to be able to connect. So if you see this ID as well, I'm also going to kill it afterwards, so don't worry about that. But you can see what devices have connected. You can even give the devices descriptions, you can give them static IPs if you want, you can set what the IP address range is for your devices. Zero tier is really, really neat. But what I want to do is just join this new microtech or this new Docker that I've brought up. So to do that, just paste in this network ID, hit enter, 200, join, okay. That is fantastic. I like it when stuff just says okay and we're, we're ready to roll. So if I go back onto zero tier, whoa, that's crazy. I can see there's a new client that's requesting an auth. And if I want to auth this, it's as simple as clicking on the yes. And this will now assign an IP address to that zero tier client as well. You will see that it is going to be running a new build of zero tier and we can see what IP address it received automatically from zero tier. So I can just copy this and my actual Windows computer, which is, it feels a bit redundant since everything is kind of like connected directly with VMs and stuff already. Um, but since I'm on zero tier now, I should be able to ping the zero tier IP from my actual home computer because this is already running zero tier. If I look at my zero tier, there's my ID, I'm already connected. And if I ping, 10 147 17 190, which is the container on my Microtik, I can see it is live. It's actually up and running. It is working. So I'm super stoked for this. Now let's actually see if we can access a virtual network that's sitting behind the CHR via zero tier. So what I'm going to do is just look at the CHR quickly or the x86, sorry. And if I look at the addresses, I have an ether2, which has the IP address 172.16.0.1 slash 24 bound to it, right? And this is actually on the Microtik. And behind that, I'm not sure if my Linux host is live. It is live. So let's just quickly check what this Linux host's IP address is as well, because I want to see if I can maybe get to this Linux host via zero tier quickly. So if I do an IF config, 172.16.0.254 is my Linux machine. Great, so we know that the Linux machine, which is on my hypervisor is also live, or this is actually sitting behind the Microtik as a client. All right, so next step is actually to advertise some routes, or let's test and see if it works. If I go onto my computer and I ping something like 172.16.0.254, which is the Linux VM's IP, it is currently timing out. And the reason this is timing out is because I'm going to go through my normal internet path to actually try and access this client. So if I do a route print and I search for 172.16.star, I can see there are no active routes for this. Now zero tier makes it really easy to send routes out to all of the clients just using its front page or its admin page. So what I can do is just add a new route for this. And I'd just like to copy this IP address for the container because obviously to get to this virtual network, I'm going to tell all of my other zero tier clients, hey, you need to connect to this zero tier endpoint as your gateway. So let's scroll back up, add a new route. 
My destination will be 172.16.00/24, and I'm going to do this via that containers IP. I will submit this, and now that that has been added, if I actually look at my Windows client and I do the same command of route print 172.16.star, we can see there is a new active route, which is pushing traffic via the zero tier gateway which is that container. So let's test again. Let's see, can I actually ping out? So if I ping 172.16.0.254 minus T, it's still timing out. Why is this timing out? Well, I've got a suspicion why. Because right now what is happening is the traffic is actually getting to that Docker container. And from the Docker container, it's actually going to go out to the actual MicroTik. So if we look at this shell that I'm still connected to and I do a route, we can see that the default route out, which means if it wants to get to 172.16.00 slash 24, it's going to go to the actual MicroTik's IP of 10.0.0.1. So let's see, can I ping 172.16.0.1 from this container, I can. Can I ping dot 254? That I can ping as well. So I know that the container can actually get to that network, but why can't I on my actual home computer get there? Well, if I look at the MicroTix routing table, it's going to make a lot more sense because if I go to these routes, we'll see that there is no routing available for the zero tier network. So in essence, if I want to make this work, all that I need to really do is route the zero tier subnet back to the Docker IP of the zero tier container. So if I go onto my zero tier console or admin page, I can just quickly grab this IP address range. So it's 10.147.17. So let's just add a new route. And I will say, if you want to get to 10.147.17.0/24, the gateway is going to be the Docker container IP of ZT2, which was 10.0.0.100. I will apply this change and I actually see that I do have something similar added, but this was from testing from before. So let's just disable this old route or delete it entirely because dot 254 was my first zero tier container. And now this should actually work. So if I go back onto my command prompt and I run a ping again to 172.16.0.254, it's crazy guys i'm actually getting to my virtual network from my zero tier client and again this is super powerful because if this let's say this wasn't my computer if this was my laptop i could have connected to zero tier over any internet and i'd still be able to access my virtual lab really really powerful stuff so i really hope you guys can see how awesome sd wan is and how cool this is that we can install a Docker container of zero tier on an x86 or a CHR to get this working without having the architecture that officially supports it. And what is nice for me this way as well, you are running a more stable and latest version of zero tier. So this is extremely cool. All right. So this is going to be where I'm going to end off the video. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Again, I'd like to remind you guys to like and subscribe and also comment. Tell me what you thought about the video and make any suggestions that you'd like to make. I will definitely cover it if I have time. And I'd like to thank everybody again. Thanks again for watching, especially my patrons and YouTube members. And I'll see you guys in the next videos. Happy holidays. Bye.